In this video, we're going to be continuing our discussion of Eulerian graphs. So remember in part one, we learned about what an Eulerian circuit and an Eulerian trail are. So if a graph has an Eulerian circuit, we say that the graph is Eulerian. And if the graph has an Eulerian trail, we say that it's semi-Eulerian. Okay, well, why do these names come about? So a bit of a history lesson here. So the Bridges of Konigsberg, this was a famous problem solved by Leonard Euler, and when he solved this problem, um, it's not like it was especially hard or anything, but um, when he solved it, it was the sort of first known graph theory result. So here's the problem. Um, here we have a sort of rough map of Konigsberg, and so the brown um, represent land masses. So here's part of the city up above on the north part of the river, um, and then there's a couple of islands in the river, and there's a landmass on the south part of the river, and then all this red is bridges connecting the islands. So the question is, um, could you take a walk throughout Konigsberg and cross every bridge exactly one time? So um, as the story goes, residents of Konigsberg would sort of debate this over coffee, right? Like, oh, well, my grandmother did it once, so you must be able to do it, that sort of thing. Um, and so they wanted an answer once and for all, right? Is it possible to walk throughout the city and cross every bridge exactly once? So you may want to just pause the video for a minute and try to construct such a route, right? And see if you can cross every bridge exactly one time. Okay, well, Euler's approach to this problem was forget the map. We just want to think about the most essential elements. And what are the most essential elements? Uh, we've got these land masses, okay, which we're going to represent with our vertices. Okay, so we've got these land masses, and then you've got bridges connecting the land masses. Okay, so we've got two bridges going from the north land mass to this island, and then two bridges going from the middle island to the southern land mass, right? And then we've got a bridge going to each of the other three from this sort of rightmost island. So here's the really essential information for figuring this out because if you can get to one landmass, right, like you can definitely walk to the beginning of any of these three. So really you can just say, okay, these three meet at this one vertex, right, or these five bridges meet at this one vertex. And now the question becomes, is there an Eulerian trail in this graph or if you want to be able to take a walk throughout the city and end up back at your house, right, so if your house is down here on the southern landmass, you need to be able to walk across all these bridges and end up back on the southern landmass. Or in other words, is there an Euler circuit where you begin and end at this vertex? So this problem is, um, are there, you can be reduced to the question of whether or not there's an Eulerian trail or circuit in this graph. So of course they didn't, Euler didn't call them Eulerian trails and um, circuits. They just got that name because he was the one who solved this problem. Okay, so let's think a little bit about what's actually happening <clears throat> on whether or not we can travel across all these bridges. Well, let's just think about this. So when you use, let's attempt to just create one. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of copy down my vertices and attempt to create an Eulerian trail or circuit and just see what happens. So let's say I start here and I take this bridge and then I take this bridge. Okay, well, examine here for a second. I've used exactly one bridge of the first vertex, my initial vertex. I used two bridges on the sort of middle vertex, one going in, one going out, and one vertex, one bridge on the vertex where I stopped, okay? And if I use another bridge, what happens? So let's say I go here. Well, again, I've got one bridge being used and my initial and ending points, and then I've got two bridges being used on my middle points, right? Okay, uh, so let's say we go back to this one. Well, now I've got one and three bridges, but notice that they're both odd, one bridge and three bridges and my beginning and ending points, and the middle ones all degree two, right? Or for example, um, let's say I add this one. Well, now this is the beginning and the ending point. So since those should both be odd, it adds up to being even. And all the ones in the middle 
are even, right? Because I always use two bridges, one going in, one going out, one going in, one going out, one going in, one going out. And then say maybe I take this one next, right? Again, the beginning vertex is odd, the ending vertex is odd, and the middle vertices are even. Okay, so now I've, I've sort of put myself in a pickle here with this graph because now I've used, here's where I ended up, and I've used all those edges, and I still didn't use this, right? So at least what I was doing just then doesn't end up with an Eulerian trail or an Eulerian circuit. But let's think about this idea of using an even number of um, edges versus an odd number of edges. So whenever you try to start making this trail or circuit, you're going to start somewhere and you're going to use one edge, one bridge, if you want to think about them in terms of bridges. You're going to use one edge moving away from that vertex. But then for all your intermediate vertices, you're supposed to go and leave and go and leave and go and leave which will use exactly two of the edges associated with that vertex. And then wherever you end up, if that's different from your starting place, then that will also be odd and your starting place will still be odd. But if it's the same as your starting place, it will be even, like we saw sort of halfway through this example um, over here on the right. So when is a graph going to be Eulerian? So when will you be able to start and end in the same place and cross every edge? So you may want to think about the answer to this, if you want to pause. It turns out that a connected graph is Eulerian if and only if every vertex has even degree. right? Because imagine you're going to have to leave and come back, and leave and come back um, for the original vertex, and every vertex in the middle, you're going to arrive, but that's not the where you're supposed to end, so you have to leave and then you might arrive somewhere else and you have to leave and you arrive somewhere else and you have to leave until you end up back at the original vertex and that's the only one you don't have to leave but you already used one edge leaving in the first place so when you come back that'll make it an even number of edges. Okay and then what's the corresponding result going to be for semi-Eulerian? Again you might want to pause and think about this for a second. So in a semi-Eulerian graph, the beginning and ending place are different, which means you need exactly two odd vertices, right? All the ones in the middle are still going to be even because you're going to arrive and leave and arrive and leave. But where you begin and where you end, you're only going to use one edge. You're either only going to leave or you're only going to arrive. Okay, so when a graph has exactly two odd vertices, then it will be semi-Eulerian, right? Or it will have an Eulerian trail. Um, so, I also just want to point out that having being Eulerian and being semi-Eulerian, these are mutually exclusive. Right, so that just means that uh, they can't both happen. So if you know one, then the other one is automatically not true. Right, because you have to have every vertex even to be Eulerian, but you have to have exactly two odd vertices to be semi-Eulerian, right? So you can see that both of those can't happen at the same time. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's go back to the original graph, um, the original question. Can you walk across all the bridges exactly one time? Or in other words, does there exist an Eulerian trail or an Eulerian circuit? And the answer is no, you can't. This has degree 3, this has degree 5, this has degree 3, and this has degree 3. Not every vertex is even, in fact none of them are even, which means that it's certainly not Eulerian, and because you have more than two odd vertices, that means that it's not semi-Eulerian. Okay, so you can't travel across all the bridges of Konigsberg. So by the way, Konigsberg is a town in Prussia, um, and I think this result came out um, sometime around 1730, sometime in the 1730s. <clears throat> okay, so let's do another quick example of this to make sure we've got it down. So is this graph in blue Eulerian, semi-Eulerian, or neither? So you might want to think about this if you want to pause and think about it. Okay, well the only information that we need to figure this out because of the two results is what are the degrees of all the vertices? This has degree 2, this has degree 3. Okay, so degree 3. You can Im immediately know it's not Eulerian because if it's Eulerian, it has to have every single vertex with even degree. Well, this one's odd, so that's out automatically. Okay, so let's see the rest. 2, 
degree 4, degree 4, degree 2, degree 4, degree 2, degree 3. Okay, now we've got two odd. So that's okay still for simulating as long as none of the rest are odd. So 4 and 2. So if you look at the degrees, there are exactly two that are odd. So G is semi-Eulerian. Because it contains exactly two odd vertices. So it's really as simple as that. If you want to know if you can use every single edge in a graph and either end up in the same place or in different places, all you have to do is look at the degrees of the vertices, right? That's what these two results tell you. If every vertex is even, then it's Eulerian. If it has exactly two odd vertices, then it's semi-Eulerian. So these are, this is a pair of really nice results um, because you find out something that's sort of non-trivial about the graph, but it's a really easy test to see if it has these properties. So that's all I wanted to talk about for Orlarian graphs.